What's up, guys? We're back with some big basketball news. Hokies pulled in a new recruit. And then also, uh, softball found out where they'll be playing in the regional. And baseball, which is four games left, you know, they got to pull things together. So we got a lot to cover today. But let's start out with our basketball recruit, Jaden Shoot committed from Duke to play for Virginia Tech this next season on Saturday night. He's a 6'5 shooting guard, and he can play the three as well. Uh, he has three seasons of eligibility left. He redshirted last year, which is what would have been his sophomore season after playing in just the first game, and then he had to undergo a left knee surgery, so he missed the rest of that year. His freshman year, he played 14 games, uh, averaged about seven minutes, and had about two points per game during that season. He really didn't see too much playing time at Duke. A lot of just like blowout wins and stuff. You know, when you get your younger guys a couple minutes is where he was featured. And a lot of that just comes down to it being Duke. Now, he wasn't like a number five guy in that 2022 recruiting class, but he was relatively high up there. ESPN had him about number 50 in the country. Uh, on three had him at about a 94 rating, and currently in the transfer portal, he's sitting at about a 90 rating. So he was still a pretty highly rated recruit, but not quite as high as a lot of the guys Duke is getting. So I would attribute that to why we didn't see too much of him in his freshman year, but decided to enter the portal and landed at Virginia Tech. He was the number eight shooting guard in that 2022 class by 24-7 sports. So clearly he's a guy that a lot of teams wanted. Uh, class 1A All-State first team in 2021 and 2022. He was an honorable mention in 2020. So, you know, made a big splash in uh, the Illinois high school basketball scene. He had offers from Michigan State, Illinois, Ohio State, Wisconsin, Marquette, and Creighton, just to name a few, but ended up going with Duke. And as far as I'm concerned, if you're getting a basketball scholarship from Duke, that is a good addition to this Hokies team. I know he didn't play a lot, and sure, there's some uncertainty about a guy who just missed a year, but at the end of the day, Clearly, there's a lot of potential, and that's something that I'm excited about with this team. We've seen that they have a lot of potential. There's a lot of excitement around them, and you know, Mike Young's building up a good squad. This is just one more good, solid addition to this team, and I think he'll fit in the system well. Before we talk a little bit more on what Shoot does well, let's talk about today's video sponsor, Bet Online. Bet Online, it's your number one source for all your summer sports this season from the MLB, golf, NBA, and the NHL playoff stats. They've got all the latest stats, news, and scores available to follow your favorite teams. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest team matchups, player props, and odds on just about every sport out there. Head over to the website today or use your mobile dice to get in on the action. Bet Online, where the game starts. So Shoot, as his name suggests, is a fantastic shooter. He's going to knock it down from wherever. We're talking tough shots, off-balance shots, off the dribble, just plain spot-up shooting. Jaden Shoot is lights out from all over. Obviously, that's really exciting when it comes to Mike Young's teams. They have done, you know, relied a lot on the three, uh, and it's been... Some would say a little bit of a make or break for them when they're hitting those threes this like last year or two. They've been a really good team, but when they can't knock them down, obviously that's going to hurt the squad quite a bit. So shoot is going to obviously contribute to that greatly, being that that's kind of his big function. He shot about 39% from three in high school, and his biggest game at Duke, he was three of three uh, from behind the arc so you know he's definitely going to add on that front and I like how he can fit into this system just spacing the floor he can function as like an offensive kick option and he's pretty decent with the ball in his hands too now he's not the craftiest guy 
but he's certainly not shabby at anything. And, you know, just being able to hit those tough shots, I think that's going to function really well in this offense with that floor spacing and just, you know, providing that guy from the outside where you can kick to, he can hit something off like a high ball screen. He can, you know, come around the screen and just, you know, pop one from outside or, you know, drive in, hit like a floater or an elbow shot or something like that. So I think he'll function really well in that aspect and, you know, just being an option for this team, just a guy who you can rely on to hit that shot, almost like Hunter Couture. He's that guy where, you know, he's just, he hits his threes and, you know, that's really where he excels. Couture could do a lot, a lot more on top of that, but that was really his thing. That was, that was his spot in the offense. And that's kind of what shoot spot is probably going to be as well. I've heard like a Tyler Nickel comparison for him, um, but a little bit less like slashy in the lane. I I imagine him being somewhere between like Nickel and Couture in that, um, but I haven't seen too much of his play, but just watching some highlights and reading up on him, I, that's kind of where I see him being. Uh, so I think he's going to be really exciting on this team. Like I said, adding that outside scoring threat and, you know, just being a guy you can rely on to score the basketball. He's just another good addition with a lot of potential on this team. And he's also relatively young. I mean, three seasons left of eligibility. That's really exciting, I think, for this crew. So big addition on Saturday night hearing from Shoot uh, transferring from Duke. So that's really exciting. And then also speaking of exciting, Hokie Softball found out where they'll be playing this postseason. They are set to go to the LA Regional, hosted by number six UCLA. Virginia Tech, they're going to face off with San Diego State on Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, San Diego State, they're currently at 41 in the RPI compared to the Hokies at 21. And uh, Virginia Tech's about 16 in the ESPN rankings currently. So they're in a pretty good position that that's kind of an area where they've been just about this entire season. Those uh, mid teens, I think they peaked at around 11 this year. So that like 11 to 16 zone has kind of been the sweet spot for them in the rankings this season. Now the Hokies do have experience in LA. Uh, they went to the LA super regional back in 2021 where UCLA ended up eliminating them. So perhaps this is the year where they can get back at the Bruins. If they beat San Diego State, it will either be UCLA or Grand Canyon University, the winner of that. So it's uh, UCLA as the top seed uh, with Hokies, San Diego State, and Grand Canyon filling out that region. And then when it comes to baseball, Ooh, it, it's been rough once again. Lost a 2-1 series to Miami. The first two games, they were pretty close. It was like two runs or so. Um, just close losses that you want to have back. But they did come back with a big win in Game 3, 13-4, to salvage the weekend some. Now, this Tech baseball team, they're not in a great spot for this postseason. They've... They played four good ACC series to, you know, start conference play against Pitt, Louisville, Notre Dame, and Boston College. Those are four of the five worst teams in the ACC. And after they got through those four weekends, it just all went downhill. You know, Wake, UNC, just it was all downhill from there. This weekend, kind of the same thing, lost two out of three games, and, you know, like I said, Pitt, Louisville, Notre Dame, and Boston College, four of the five worst teams in the conference. The fifth team that I didn't mention, Miami, who we played this weekend, so that's not good. Losing two out of three to Miami at this point in time is really not good. They're already kind of hurting in bracketology. I think they really need two wins against UVA and 
you know, beat JMU to really move up at all and be in a little bit better position. The last D1 poll that I saw, Virginia Tech was sitting at a three seed still in Tennessee's region, which in a way I'm honestly surprised because just the skid over the last month and a half about now. Now, don't get me wrong. These are some of the best teams in college baseball. I mean, it it's like ranked series after ranked series outside of Miami and the Ohio series that they swept last weekend. But just a lot of ranked opponents, and they haven't fared well. They've lost two or three of every three-game series uh, since you know playing Wake Forest, which wasn't where we expected them to be at that point. They were a little lower on the rankings than they were preseason, but we know that that Wake Forest team is really good all around. They are fantastic. So Virginia Tech, they're sitting at a three seed as of the last poll in Tennessee's regional. It's going to be really tough for them to move up because UVA is rated pretty highly, and JMU's not bad at all either. They're a three seed in a separate region as well. So certainly not an easy team to get past either. And obviously UVA being, I think they're ranked somewhere in the top 10 around like number six currently. They're going to be a really tough team to beat. So, you know, with that, I could see the Hokies dropping down a little bit, you know, playing tough teams If they don't win at least two games, I think they're in trouble. If they get swept by UVA, I think they're really, really in trouble because just seeing how they've gone the last like five, six weeks, they haven't been playing that well. If they can't come out of here with at least two wins, there is potential to drop down to a four seed. If they get swept by UVA or, you know, they lose two to UVA and the JMU game, I think they could also move down. But if they lose all four, do they get snubbed? I mean, I would hope not, but certainly not in their favor if that happens. Realistically, I think you need to beat JMU and get at least one win against UVA to feel okay going into uh, the selection. I mean, this team just hasn't been performing lately, and they're in trouble. Tennessee is going to be a very tough opponent to match up with. And, you know, traveling to Tennessee, the Hoagies haven't played all that well on the road either, which is also very worrying. So I just went ahead and double checked UVA sitting at 10 right now. So a little bit lower than I initially thought, but they're still way up there and they're going to be a tough opponent to beat. And Tennessee, like I said, They're going to be a really tough one. We do not want to be up against them. I mean, this is the number one team right now. They were three in last week's poll, but bumping up to one, I mean, this this is not good for Tech. It's not looking good. And as I said earlier, they haven't been as good on the road either. Ten and eight on the road. They're a little bit better at home at 22 and nine, uh, but... 10-8 Ten and eight on the road. I mean, that's that's not a good sign. They're fourteen and thirteen in the ACC. This team just they just haven't had the same aura they had early in the year, and it's concerning. It's really concerning. I mean, you're saying we have to go against currently, as of recording this at this very moment, the top team in the country in the regional. I mean, come on. Like, if if they could have pulled out one good series win in the last, like, five weeks, I mean, would you be where you are right now? Uh, they've been projected in Tennessee's region for a little while now, but I think winning a couple of big games here or there could have just made a huge difference in feelings about the postseason. You don't want to be playing Tennessee. You, it It's simple as that. And with the last four games that they have with JMU 
and a three-game series against UVA. This is really troubling for them. I mean, they've they just haven't been able to win close games, and then they've struggled. I mean, they've they've got all the talent in the world. It feels like, but it they just haven't been able to close out these close games like they did against like with Miami. Those were close games, and they couldn't close those out. They've got ridiculous bats. And, you know, when they're hitting really well, they're unstoppable. But you you can't rely on scoring 14 runs in a game in the postseason because as the talent obviously gets more difficult, it's going to be a lot harder to put up double-digit runs against the better pitching teams. I mean, you just, you just can't do it all the time. Every day the bats aren't going to be hot and... You know, I'm worried after losing two close games in Miami and then blowing them out. It's like, okay, when when we're hitting a ridiculous amount, we're just putting run after run after run on the board. Things feel awesome, and this team's unstoppable. But on the other days when that doesn't happen, it's very real that they lose games. And being against Tennessee, not feeling good here, not feeling good at all. So... We'll have to see what happens with UVA and JMU coming up. Four games left to turn things around and potentially move out of Tennessee's, you know, threat in the region at least. Um, but I don't know if I see this going a different way. Playing another ranked opponent with UVA and JMU being a good team, I'm worried. I'm really worried. But we'll be back to cover those games and you know, just checking on how they're doing, but softball, on the other hand, feeling okay about them, UCLA, I mean, they're a top team, but I think Virginia Tech can handle them if they get into a rhythm, got to get through San Diego State first on Friday at 6, Eastern, like I said, Uh, so definitely be there for that, Uh, so in terms of that one, I mean, looking forward to covering it, we'll have a little recap on here, and you know, hopefully the Hokies move on to face UCLA after that. But hey, good news with Jaden Shoot. So looking forward to a couple more weeks of Hokies Diamond Sports. We're getting right up into the postseason. I mean, softball's starting this weekend, and then baseball's just just got one week left. So exciting time. I just graduated, uh, heading back for my master's in the fall, but one degree under the belt. So really exciting time and uh, look forward to covering some more on the buzz with you guys.